Now let's symbolize the situation. Let the mass be M, let the force be F, and let the radius of the circle about which this thing moves be R. Then clearly we have acceleration is F over M. That's the acceleration in meters per second squared around the arc with distances measured in arc distance. The angular acceleration is going to be the acceleration divided by R, just going back to what the definition of a radian is and the connection between the radians and the meters moved around the arc. Uh, that's all this is expressing. And that's going to, of course, then be F over M divided by R or F over MR. Now we ask what happens if we apply a force F at a distance X from the center of rotation, not at the position of the mass. Our experience tells us and our experimental evidence tells us that we're going to get less acceleration here than if the, with the force exerted here than if the force is exerted here. And in fact, our intuition might well tell us that the acceleration or the effect of, let's put it this way, let's say that the effect of this force here is the same as if we put a smaller force out here. And that smaller force that would be equivalent to this force would just be in the same proportion, uh, the forces would be in the same proportion as these distances. So that this force would be equal to this force times the proportion x over r. So that if x is less than r, we're going to get uh, x over r will be less than 1, that will give us less force. Uh, we could also, of course, uh, if the rod continued out here, since it's massless, it doesn't matter how far we continue it, x could be greater than r, in which case we'd need a greater force here at the position of m than we would have to exert out here to get the same effect. Now what we're after is the angular acceleration of this system. If we accept that the force, the equivalent force out here would be F times X over R, then we could directly find the acceleration, uh, not the angular acceleration, but the acceleration of the mass by dividing force by mass. And that's exactly what we do here. Uh, I might be losing track here. Well, let's go up here anyhow. If we divide the force, let's, let's look down here again. If we divide this force by this mass, we're going to get F times X over M times R. Okay, that, that should be clear. Now, if we then want angular acceleration, we have to divide by R again. And what do we get? We get this thing that I've written up here. Angular acceleration is Fx over Mr squared. Now this is a real important equation here. And we're going to simplify it a little bit by saying that uh, uh, F times X is what we're going to call the torque. Remember that F was the force exerted and X was the distance between the axis of rotation and the force. And we assumed a perpendicular here, too. I don't think I mentioned that, but that, that should be perpendicular. Again, if the force has two components, only the perpendicular component counts in creating rotation. Well, F times X is the effectiveness of this force, and that's what we call torque. So we multiply force by distance from the center of rotation, we get F times X. Down here, if we multiply this force by the distance, which is R, we get F times X over R multiplied by R, that's F times X. Same effect. And we call that the torque. Okay, the force times the distance uh, from the center of rotation, where the force is perpendicular to a line from the center of rotation to the point of application. If the torque is F times X, then we can say that alpha is torque over MR squared. Now, by analogy with Newton's second law, which says that the um, acceleration of an object is the force divided by the mass, torque is a lot like force. It's what causes rotational acceleration. And this is a lot like just plain old acceleration. It's a rotational instead of linear acceleration, but it's an acceleration. So we might want to say that this mr squared is a lot like mass. 
and we do say that, and we call, give this a name, we, call it, we designate it by I, and we call it the moment of inertia of this mass, of this, system, of this mass at the uh, distance 3 meters and so forth. Okay? So when a mass M is a distance R from a center of rotation, then it contributes MR squared to the moment of inertia. And we finally have Newton's second law in angular form. It says alpha equals tau over I. Acceleration is torque divided by moment of inertia. That could, of course, be rearranged to say that the torque equals acceleration times moment of inertia. Tau equals I alpha equivalent to F equals MA. This moment of inertia, this sum of all the MR squareds in an object, is analogous to mass. Torque is analogous to force and angular acceleration is analogous to acceleration.